What's up everyone, Jessica Dean here. Today's video is going to focus on how to get started with Ghost, an open source, headless, node-based content management system. Ghost is most popular for blogging and online publication. You can collaborate with teams or you can use it individually. In fact, my own personal blog uses Ghost as the back end for everything that I write, and I've been using it for a few years now. Now, we're not going to focus today on how you run Ghost in production. There's actually a lot that goes into how to use Ghost, but getting started with it is very simple, and you can do so with actually one and a half commands. Today, we're going to focus specifically on how you run Ghost locally. Maybe you're curious about switching over to Ghost, or maybe you're curious about starting some development for Ghost. Either way, we're going to have some fun today. Let's check it out. The first thing we're going to do is open our preferred browser and head on over to ghost.org slash docs slash setup. You'll see a setup guide page, probably like this one. Now you'll notice that there are six different ways you can install Ghost. For today's video, we're going to focus on the local install, which is a fast track way of getting started with Ghost. It's not recommended and it's not suitable for production use or contributing to Ghost Core if that's your end goal, but it is a really fantastic way to get started with Ghost, understand how to use it, and how to start working with themes, images, posts, all of that fun stuff that Ghost offers. It's also probably one of the easiest ways to get started with Ghost in general out of the other five. Now to install Ghost locally, you are gonna need to make sure that you're running Mac, Windows, or Linux, which is probably pretty standard, right? Cross-platform. You'll also wanna make sure that you have a supported version of Node set up on your system. You can use Yarn or NPM to manage your packages. This is a Node-based blogging platform. So you can use either one in our video. I'm gonna use NPM just because that's what I'm comfortable with. You can adjust for Yarn accordingly if that's your preference. And finally, you will also need to make sure that you need a clean, empty directory on your machine or that you have a clean, empty directory. The first thing we're going to do is start off with installing the Ghost CLI, which is a command line tool that's going to help us get Ghost installed and then help us manage Ghost locally. So I'll simply copy this to my clipboard. I'll switch over to Visual Studio Code, which has my terminal up and it also will give us some visibility into our files. And I'll simply paste this in to the terminal and hit enter. Now, if this is your first time installing the Ghost CLI, it can take a few minutes and that's completely normal. I have previously installed it, so mine might run a little quicker, but either way, it's going to go out, it's going to grab the latest package, it's going to update any packages that's needed, and then it'll let you know when it's done. Wonderful. So my Ghost CLI updated. You can see it took about 20 seconds. I do have a version of NPM that could be updated, but we'll do that at a later time. I'll hit clear. Now let's go back over to our browser. And if we continue scrolling down the page, you'll notice that the very next command is going to be what we need to install Ghost. In fact, you can see what's highlighted right here is after we run this command, we're done. Ghost will be set up and configured. But let's review a few things. First, you'll be able to access your new site on localhost 2368. Ghost serves traffic on port 2368. Remember that this is something that we're just getting started with locally and we're just learning about. So it's going to be localhost. It's not going to be something that's available or accessible on the cloud. We'll talk about that in future videos. If you want to access the Ghost admin panel, which is the backend panel to manage your posts, your themes, your content, all of that, you'll have to append your URL with slash ghost right here. Now, a few more things to note is that your publication or your blog is going to be set up in development mode with less caching. I'll show you what the configuration file looks like for the development configuration. Then you'll also have a SQLite database that will be auto-created for you, and it'll actually be stored locally. So rather than having to worry about an external database or configuring my SQL or any of that, you'll have a SQLite database stored right in content slash data. So we'll take a look at that as well. And the logs are only going to go to standard out. Let's go ahead and grab this command, copy it to our clipboard, and then head on over to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to paste this in, and I'm going to hit Enter. Now, you'll notice that I'm going to get an error because I'm trying to install Ghost in a directory that's not empty. So you can see I have a few folders and a few files, and we're going to use these in future videos. But I do have this demo directory right here that is empty. So if we rerun that same command, only we use the dash dash dir flag to specify a directory, we can then give it the name of demo, which is the subdirectory I have here that is empty. 
So I'll hit enter and the ghost CLI is now going to go out and it's going to get everything wired up. It's going to set up all my dependencies. It's going to link dependencies. It's going to make sure that it uses the latest version of ghost. So at the time of this video, the latest version is 3.15.3. Now this install can take a couple minutes. So if you're sitting around waiting for three or four minutes, that's also completely normal. When this finishes up on my system, I'll circle on back. All right, so there you go. You can see that the ghost installation installed successfully. And if you wanna complete your setup of your publication or your blog, you're gonna visit the URL localhost 2368 slash ghost. We know from the documentation that that's our admin panel. So I'll simply hold command and I'll click and that'll take me over to my admin panel. Now, if you're on Windows, that might be control click, but either way, you'll wanna get to this landing page. Now you'll see that this is going to be our setup. You even see something that says create your account, but you're not creating an account on Ghost Online. You're creating an account for your own blog and all that information is gonna be stored locally. Because remember, we are working with local host. So we switch back over to Visual Studio Code and we drop down into our demo folder. You'll now see that we have a few different files one of which is this config.development file. I mentioned on how we'll kind of review our configuration environment and see what that less caching is about. You actually don't really have a lot of information for caching in here because you're not explicitly setting it. You're not running this in production. We'll talk about how you can customize this for a production environment in a future video. But right now, the most important parts to note is your URL, which is localhost 2368. You can see the port it's serving on. The host is 127.0.0.1. If you're new to networking, that's just the IPv4 way of saying that that's you, that's your home. You can see the database you're using is SQLite 3, and you can even see the file name where that's stored. That's actually stored right in demo content data, and there's our ghost local database. So if I drop down into content and I open data, there's our database file. You can see that we're using direct mail, which is also set up by default. We even see that in our logs. And you can see that the logging is set up for standard out, which we know is what's to be expected from reading the ghost documentation. So now that we understand that all this stuff is just happening locally, let's go ahead and create our local account. So I'm simply gonna create account, give it a site title. I'll call it ghost local blog. I'll give it my name and my email address. Give it a password, there we go. And the second screen we'll see is an option to invite staff users. So Ghost, especially the theme that it ships with, which is called Casper, and we'll learn about themes in upcoming videos, but Ghost is often compared to a free version, an open source version of Medium. So you can actually collaborate with teams and have multiple people use your Ghost blog site. You would simply enter their email addresses and invite them as users. Since this is really just for learning, development, and testing purposes, I'm going to click down here where it says, I'll do this later, take me to my site. Now you'll see that this is our blog. It's already set up. We could get started with managing our posts. We could see anything that we have scheduled. We can create a draft. We have pages. We can look at tags or the staff if we were to have invited users. We have general, which are kind of generalized settings. You can even see that you can edit things like your title, your descriptions, your site time zones, or if you want to view the site itself. One of the things I personally dislike is if I click view site, it actually shows ghost hashtag site. If I wanna see what it looks like to the regular user, I can just remove that slash ghost. And now I see my blog. You can see the little navigation up at the top where I can start searching by tags. I can click this little ghost icon to go back to the home page. This is what's called a featured image and every post has one. They're all tagged as getting started. And these are actually really great posts to read to learn how to start writing posts with Ghost or see about publishing options or managing your admin settings. You can drill down into any of these and you'll also notice that it tells you the author, which is right here, the date, and it even gives you the how long it'll take to read, which again really gives you that medium feel. Scrolling down further, you can see that it looks exactly as you would expect from a normal blog. You can have a numbered list, you can have bullet lists, you can have, you can even use it as a markdown editor where I can do headers and I can set my different markdown syntax as I would be used to writing. 
And you can even see that the next thing you're gonna to wanna to read about is about the ghost editor. So in future videos, we're gonna dive even deeper. We're gonna learn how we can play around with images in Ghost, how we can play around with themes. And then once we feel comfortable enough using Ghost, we're gonna end up bundling all this stuff up, running it in a Docker container that then we can put in any cloud, Azure, Google, Amazon. You can run it literally anywhere you can run a Docker container. If this video helped you, please feel free to share it hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.